So we would like to fix that. Okay. Well, we have a similar issue in English. So I'm going to introduce some words you've probably never seen, even if you are a native English speaker, hypernym and hyponym. Uh, we're going to talk about an idea in programming known as interface inheritance. Okay. So this is an issue that we face in English, of course, right? So here, for example, if you want to wash your poodle, what do you do? Well, brush your poodle before a bath. Use lukewarm water. Talk to your poodle in a calm voice. Use poodle shampoo. Rinse well. Air dry. Reward your poodle. Okay? Or suppose you have a Malamute. One might write the directions as follows. Malamute's another. That's the Aru dog. Wash your Malamute. Brush your Malamute before a bath. Use lukewarm water. Talk to your Malamute in a calm voice. Use Malamute shampoo. Rinse well. Air dry. Reward your Malamute. Okay. So, of course, in English, we have this notion of categorical words, right? So whether you speak English, Spanish, whatever else. Uh, we have a concept known as a hypernym in English to deal with this situation. So the word dog is a hypernym of poodle or Malamute or Yorkie. It's a word that specifies a category that all these other things are. So we can, of course, replace these silly directions with just wash your dog. To do so, brush your dog before a bath, use lukewarm water, talk to your dog in a calm voice, use dog shampoo, I did not bold it for some reason, rinse well, air dry, and reward your dog. Okay? So, no big deal. So the question is, how can we do the same thing in Java? What's the equivalent? Okay? Well, before we get there, I'm going to throw yet another word at you, which is hyponym. So we can use the word hyponym for the opposite, right? So if dog is a hypernym of poodle, hyper meaning above, you know, a lot. Dog is a hypernym of poodle, malamute, dachshund, or dachshund, as I've spelled it here. Well, I failed terribly in German today, but that's okay. We'll get Java right. Um, poodle will be a hyponym of dog. It's just the opposite thing, okay? Uh, and so these ideas, they comprise, of course, in English, a hierarchy. In fact, you could take every English noun and build a gigantic network of all of these that says, for example, a dog is a canine, a canine is a carnivore, a carnivore is an animal, and so forth, up to the top. Uh, and so if you're curious about this, there is a project called the WordNet Project. It's an academic project which takes all words in English, I don't think they've done it for any other languages, and assembles this giant hierarchy. It's kind of fun to browse. Uh, and if you get real bored this semester and you want to do one of the semester, uh, projects from last semester, it uses this. Okay, but that's for later. Okay, or for the past. Okay, so those are hypernym hyponym relationships. So we want to capture that same notion in Java. And so to do that, I'm going to observe that obviously S lists and A lists are both some kind of a list in the sense that, well, A lists and S lists, if we, they, they constitute listiness, right? They should, we want to be able to tell Java that there exists something that is A list. Uh, and so to do that, to do the equivalent of what we do in English where we say dog to mean all kinds of dogs, we're going to have two steps. The first step is to define our category or our reference type for our hyponym. We're going to set up something called list61b.java. And then step two is going to be to edit these files and inform Java, by the way, these things are list 61Bs. Okay? So let's do that. So we're going to start by making, uh, we're going to use this new keyword interface instead of class, and that's going to allow us to make a list. Okay? And a list isn't going to actually do anything at first. In fact, I'm going to remove the file because I want to do it totally from scratch. Okay, a list 61B. We're going to write public interface list 61B, and we're going to say uh, define a list. Uh, interface for all lists, present, past, future. Oh, Amen. All right, cool. Okay. And what it's going to do is we will open up, if we want to do this, the easiest way is to, oh boy, I have so many things open for my run-throughs. Let's get out of here. Previews of the future. It's so meta. Okay. Oh boy. All right. So list. There we go. All right, so we're going to take S list, and I'm going to do this the laziest, weirdest way. So a list 61B is going to consist of, I'm going to, in this file, just put the names of all of the methods. So I'm just specifying what a list ought to be. So all I'm going to do is go through the code and slowly munch it up, Langolier style, until there's just public methods left. Okay, so here we go. That gets to stay. Okay, and I'm just listing all the things that constitute a list. This is what Java wants us to do. It's like if you were trying to describe a dog. Uh, you might describe all the features dogs should have, like barking and stuff. Okay, private. Do you think this should be part of the interface, just philosophically? No? Why not? Because other lists might not have an idea of this. A lists certainly don't have a back node. So that goes away. So you keep munching. Yum, 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 yum. All right, consuming things. Yum, yum, yum. Maybe I'll hold the delete key. That's too slow. All right, so keep going. I think the pattern should be clear. 
And so finally, we get up here. All right, how about the constructor? Do you, should we keep uh, this? No, OK, we're actually just going to take it away completely. All right, and that's just the convention. Instance variables go, inner class goes, S list goes, that goes, and there we're done. All right, there is our interface, OK? It doesn't seem like much. It's just a specification. It's just an interface. Uh, and if we compile it, what happens? Oh, we forgot to put blorp here. Okay. All right. So if we run this, we got an interface. Yes. So that's part of the story. You've got an interface. You can talk about a whole bunch of mappers. Uh huh. And there are no string interface where you know, provide you know, the minimum amount of mappers, which, will be, which has to be overrided by the lower property. Yes. So this is going to basically specify the methods that all lists must have. Okay. So that's step one making an interface. It tells you what a list uh, is able to do, but does not say how a list ought to do it, right? You're just specifying lists need all these things, just like you might say dogs need barks, but each dog has its own bark, okay? Next up, we're going to use the implements keyword to tell the compiler that a particular thing is a hyponym. So we're going to draw these arrows. So before we added this box, now we're gonna draw arrows from list 61B to these in our conceptual diagram, okay? So this will not be all that exciting, but we go into S list. Uh, and what we're going to do now is write implements list 61b blurp. And at that point, the arrow is drawn in the sense that I can compile this and it should work. Yep. So this now implements. Uh, by adding this, now s lists are list 61bs. And we'll see why that's useful in a moment. Now, there's another thing you should do that's optional, but I think is a good idea, uh, which is listed here on the slide, which is to mark each list 61b method. Anything that is a uh, the same name with the so-called override tag, okay? And I'll, we'll talk more about why that's a good idea. But basically, anything that we copied into the other file, we're going to put override, okay? And so I could go through and do this little by little, but I'm actually going to, yes. You don't have to write override. I'll tell you why you might want to do it or not. So I'm going to do a little trick here to save myself time and not have to find all these. And uh, you guys should learn these tricks over time. But what I'm going to do is any place that I see the word public, Inside of the selection, I'm going to replace it with at override new line and then some indentation. Uh, and then I'm going to do replace. Okay, So every time I do that, I'm getting the keyword override. What's that? Yeah, I could do replace all too, but you know, showmanship. Uh, but I don't want to replace all the publics, not these. So only the ones in my selection. Okay, So let's make sure I didn't mess up doing that text trick. Didn't. OK. Let's also do the same for a list. So now I'm going to draw the arrow that tells the universe uh, that an A-list is, in fact, an, a list 61B. Okay, and it's all just smoke and mirrors right now. We haven't actually done anything with this. We're, we're just setting the stage for a better future. Okay, this is all investments in, in our public infrastructure. Okay, so now A-list also compiles. And at this point, our universe is as follows. We have a list 61B, and we have two things that are list 61Bs. Okay, what good is any of this? All right. Well, I'll come back to this slide in a minute because I want to show you uh, this. I feel like it's punchier. Um, so what we can do now is adjust our longest method to work on either kind of list. So with all of that investment we've made in our futures, we can go back to our word utils class. Get rid of all these. Uh, we can go back to our word utils class. We had these two ugly duplicate methods. We're going to destroy this thing. It was useless to us. And here, instead of saying s list, we're going to put list 61b. And now everything should work with just this function. Okay? So watching. And whether I change this to A list or S list, if we think about what's happening, we make a list, we put some words in it, and then we pass it to the longest function. And because an S list is A, list 61B, it works. And because an A list is an S list, or a list 61B, it also works. Okay? So we made one function that works with two different types. All right. So it's a rather handy idea. All right, any questions or experiments or thoughts about this? Yeah. So can you have methods in the subclass that are not part of the interface? Yes. In fact, uh, yeah, we can do that to our heart's content. We can do public void extra thing. Um, I don't know. Party, whatever. All right. And everything will still work fine. So if we go back to word utils, it'll compile. And uh, it, all that matters is that this is the minimum that all subclasses must obey. But they could do extra stuff if they must. OK? Yeah. Ah, so if we change these from blorp, no. Yeah. In fact, a list is item, because this is when we were being less silly. Yeah. 
so they don't have to match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good question. So let's try taking one away. Uh, what does word utils use? It uses get, for example. So I'm going to take away get. All right, it's gone. There's no more. Oh, sorry, wrong. Yeah, get. All right, I take away get. It is totally gone. Uh, but the longest method wants to use get. Okay. Now it might seem to you. Let me maybe put these side by side so we can understand what's going on. All right. I've taken away get. It is no longer in the interface. However. It is in the slist class. There's still git, right, wherever it is. Sorry, there's so much code here. I know. I apologize. Um, but git is in slist, but it's not in our interface. So when we call word utils, it might seem sensible that when this code is trying to run, it's going to pass it to some list, and Java will go through and say, OK, while list 61b's do not have a git method, this one does. Okay? But when we run it, I'll actually get an error that says there is no git method of list 61b. Okay? So be aware. Your static types, as we'll call them in a little while, our, 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 our interface types, they need to have everything you want. Okay? Yeah. Because it's too much work for the compiler to try and see around that. I mean, we'll talk about that issue a lot on Monday, I think. But yeah, it's kind of a preview. Okay? All right, any other experiments? Thoughts? Okay, great. So. There you have it. We've now built something that does lots of stuff. OK, so let's talk about this term override. So there's a term, terminology for the day. If a subclass happens to have a method with the same signature as a superclass, and I, OK, that's just, it should match your intuition. So the subclass is like poodle, the superclass is like dog. Then what we'll say is that the subclass method uh, overrides the method. Okay? Override just means I don't trust the boss, right? I'm a dog, I'm a poodle, I know how to bark. Dog doesn't know how to bark. I know how to do it better. I'm like closer to the ground level. I know, I know all the details. Now, the override tag is actually totally optional. Even if you do not put override, you are still overriding. This is just a way of telling the compiler, hey, by the way, I'm overriding. Okay? And why is this useful? Well, it's because you want to make sure you're actually protecting against typos. So if in slist I do something like public blurp uh, and I do like GTE or something, then it gives the compiler, uh, it will yell at you and say, you're claiming to override. Let's see, yeah. Mm. Method does not override. So here I'm claiming to override, but the compiler will check and say, no, actually, there's no GTE method in the list class. Okay? That's the main reason to do it, just as a double checking thing. Okay? Um, and it's also nice to signal to other programmers this is an overridden method, because one of the things we'll see is that as you build these programs with a whole inheritance hierarchy, it's nice just as a signal to other programmers to say, hey, look, it says override. Ooh, and I misspelled override, so what a typo. All right. OK. So it's optional. But it's just a signal to others so that it's made more clear. OK? Yes? So is that at test also optional? Ah, so the at test. Um, so that one. It's interesting, the at test annotation. What that does is acts as a signal to the JUnit runner that this is a method you should run. So if you don't put at test, then the JUnit runner will be unable to find your methods. So, yeah. yeah, that one's more necessary. Yeah, because if you wanted to actually run. So you could manually invoke them if you wanted. Okay. All right. So I will say that this is a great thing. I love interface inheritance. I think it's a beautiful idea for programming languages. There's no downside, in my opinion, or very little. Okay. Um, so what I mean by interface inheritance is that any of the subclasses, any of the hyponyms, any of our poodles, they inherit the interface from their superclass, their hypernym, their dog, right? Uh, and the interface is just all the med method signatures, and, and it's just nice. It keeps things organized. It's just a very clean way to deal with this problem. Instead of having multiple copies, one for S-list, one for A-list, we just have one uh, category, categorical sort of class-like thing, okay? Uh, so I'm going to say that this is just a great tool. I, I love it. It's very powerful. It's intuitive and good. Okay. Um, and I will mention that, by the way, our longest class, the one that we wrote, or our longest method, it will work, not just on S list or A list, but any list we may invent in the future. If we come up with, like, horse list or whatever, it'll be fine. Okay. And it so happens that you can actually create a whole hierarchy, that you could have higher level things. Dogs are animals. Animals are, you know... Uh, I don't know where you go about from animal, entities, living creatures, whatever. You get this whole sequence of things you would have to inherit. Yes? So, yeah. the uh, They, well, the interface, so in an interface, as far as we're concerned so far, the only thing you'll get is this. Like, there is no stuff that comes with it. 
you can't do like uh, you know stuff here. Yeah. So what we're doing so far, in contrast to what you've seen in 61A usually, is we're not inheriting any code. Just we're setting rules basically. We're setting rules for what the subclasses ought to do. Yes. So uh, interface also you know, implement the other interface. Can an implement imp yeah? Can an interface implement another interface? Uh, it can extend one, and we'll talk about that a little on Monday. Yeah. You must implement every method. So if, it, if there's any method you don't, in fact, uh, let's just take git away, then the Java compiler will say, you are breaking the rules. So when I tried to run slist here, I get slist is not abstract, whatever that means, and does not override abstract method git int in list 61b. I've broken the contract. I've created a dog with no bark, which I guess is still a dog. It's not as clean, right, in real life. OK. All right. So I'm going to note there's actually a seeming paradox in everything we've done today that you might probably didn't notice. Uh, maybe it doesn't even seem like a problem to you, but I do want to raise the issue. So whenever we've said before that when you set x equal to y or when you pass a parameter, you're just copying the bits. That's our big slogan of lecture three, I think, or four. Now we had another fact, which is that when we create a box, a variable, you know, a little thing in the visualizer that looks like a little L, it's only allowed to hold addresses for the appropriate type. So for example, a string variable should never point to a dog. And yet, if we look at what we've done in lecture today, we created an S list. Maybe we put some letter words in it. And then we passed along an S list into a list 61B variable. Okay? So there's a box somewhere in memory called S1. And it has the address somewhere where this list lives. And then over here, we have a list variable. And we're trying to copy the bits so it points over there. And that seems like it should be a little problematic. But Java has a very simple rule, which is? If you have a subclass, or like a superclass, if x is a superclass of y, then a box that can contain x's can also contain y's. So in other words, if I have a dog variable, it can hold poodles and malamutes and whatever else, but not the other way around, right? If you have, so if you had a poodle variable, it couldn't hold any dog, but the other way is fine, okay? Or maybe just in terms of our example we've been thinking a lot about a lot in class, because an S list is a list, it is a list, right? I mean, what constitutes a list? Well, a list is anything that implements all these things and says, by the way, I am a list. So it makes sense that the Java language designers decided that whenever you have a list variable, a list 61B variable, you really ought to, oh boy. Da, da, da. This lecture is not, this is a brand new lecture, totally new. Uh, so there's a couple little glitches here. I apologize. But basically, this list 61B box, it can hold S list. It can hold A list. Okay? Tiny little thing. Maybe you don't care. All right. So now, a little challenge, the one that's already on Poll Everywhere. I want you to think about this question. Okay? Based on everything we said, because I mean, I've been talking a long time. It's all very abstract. Uh, what do you think will happen with this code? Okay? And is it on uh, Poll Everywhere? I think I pushed it already. I don't have the text number on here either. Okay, or pollev.com. Okay, get you guys thinking. I've been ranting about, as I said, abstract things. Go. Okay. So in this case, the boring answer is it's fine. Okay, so let's talk through it. In this case, list 61B, right? So it creates a variable, list 61B, that holds list 61B's strings, right, of string. Yes. Uh, and so this is a memory box that holds 64-bit addresses. Uh, this creates an S list. That's presumably okay. We built that one before, so we can build S lists. This returns a 64-bit address, and those bits are copied into this container, and that's allowed because 
S lists are list 61B. OK, good. Then comes some list that insert front. Well, in this case, uh, because some lists are guaranteed, uh, because list 61Bs are guaranteed to have an insert front method, because that's part of the specification, elk is inserted, everything is good. OK? All right. Cool. Yes? Mm, interesting. So let's see what that does. That's a good experiment. So let's, instead of doing new S list, let's do new list 61B. What will that do? Okay. Well, we try and instantiate one of these things, and it says, this list is abstract. It cannot be instantiated. You have tried to do something totally crazy. You are going to be put into the Java jail, where strange things happen. All right. 